VR is expensive to get into. So starting as a teenager with just a basic laptop made it a bit tricky to even get my hands on it in the first place. I'm sure many of you watching can relate to that. In the summer of 2018, I decided I was done depending on an old $200 laptop to make games with. I went and spent the $1000 to buy parts so that I could build my own computer. At that time, I had my eye on VR and while I didn't want to invest the money into it at that time, I decided to put in a little extra into my PC so it could run VR games if slash when I was comfortable making that type of purchase. I was very close to buying a GTX 1050 but ended up putting in the extra $100 or so to get a GTX 1060 so I would have the specs for VR just in case. In fact, I'm still using that same PC today. Less than a month after building my PC, I joined the 42nd Ludum Dare. I did alright, but something else happened during that event. Around that time, I would spend a lot of time talking to people in the Ludum Dare IRC channels, an online chat room used similarly to Discord if you weren't aware. I forgot what the exact conversation was, but I was talking to a guy going by the name of iFire and a few others. I mentioned that I could probably make $100 if I attempted to develop and sell a game. I don't remember if it was an argument or encouragement, but I left that conversation thinking, well, maybe I will. So I went and did it. I made my game Super Potato Bra in a month and released it on H.io. It made over $300 in about a day, which was already triple my goal. Since it was doing well, at least by my standards, I decided to pay the fee and release it on Steam. In the end, it ended up netting me around $3,000, which more than covered the cost of building that PC I built like a month before. When the Oculus Rift CV1 went on sale for $300 on Black Friday 2018, I decided to finally make the jump and get into VR. I immediately loved VR, and I've mostly switched to playing VR games instead of desktop games. Just look at my Steam profile. Since then, I've put thousands of hours into VR. I was top 100 in Beat Saber and played a match in a tournament against the second best player in the game at the time. I went on to make Hitblock a competitive service with almost 20,000 users, and I got into competitive Pavlov where my team placed second in North America twice. It may come as a surprise to you, but while I make 2D platformers, I rarely play them for fun. Making 2D games is simply what I'm best at. It's a lot more feasible as a solo developer, just think about it. In a 2D world, there's a lot less space to fill in than a 3D one, so generally speaking, you need to spend a lot more time creating assets for 3D games. Because of this, I've primarily stuck with 2D, and I'll probably always continue to make 2D games. I had already tested the waters with Godot by making my game Mop a while back. This year, Godot 4 came out with official VR support that no longer requires you to use external plugins. So after I finished my semester at university, I decided to give it a try. A fun thing to note is that iFire, the guy who caused me to make Super Potato Bra and get the money to get into VR in the first place, is now one of the core Godot developers. He's also working on social VR software on top of Godot, which is a funny coincidence. So now is the part where I tell you about what it was like jumping into VR game development with Godot 4 with minimal prior experience. I had some pretty great foundational knowledge for getting into this type of thing. Last year I wasn't just messing around with shaders. I learned the arcane arts of OpenGL and computer graphics. I even went as far as to write my own skeletal animation renderer so I could hook it up with MediaPipe and animate a 3D model based on my physical movements in real time. Now, when I look at a lot of things in game engines, I can understand what's going on under the hood, which makes it significantly less likely for me to get stuck and confused about how something works in Godot. My computer graphics projects also came with experience with matrix transformations and quaternions, which are essential for manipulating 3D objects in almost any game. The hard part for me is definitely the physics, because I have almost no background in it aside from basic AABB collisions that I use in 2D games. Anyways, I had absolutely no experience with 3D asset creation, which was arguably the biggest hurdle for me. It's not just the subject that makes it hurdle. There's also the fact that asset creation makes up most of the development time spent for most games. So it's a pretty big part to be missing out on, even if you understand the fundamentals. 
After just checking to see if a basic VR example worked in Godot 4, I cracked out the donut tutorial. After 6 hours of tutorials, I completed my donut and was feeling pretty comfortable with Blender. It was time to start pumping out some assets to play with. First I created a bookshelf, which turned into a single book. I ended up playing around with that book a bit in VR for a bit. This is where I realized how completely doable VR game development was. Unfortunately, that came with a strange side effect. I got insomnia and didn't fall asleep until about 6am that night because I was thinking about what I could make. The next thing I made was a bow and arrow. As a fan of some of the more intense experiences in VR, those being competitive Beat Saber and Pavlov, I wanted to make something with fast-paced combat. I had also recently gotten into modded Skyrim VR as a combat archer with alchemy. It's almost like I made a game about that six years ago. <clears throat> I have no clue if I'll finish what I'm working on since it's purely for fun, but I'm heading in the direction of a fast-paced arcadey roguelite archery game with foraging and alchemy mixed in for power-ups. Uh, that's a bit of a mouthful, but I'm going with that. I may be sprinkling in a fair amount of blood hell as I always do, too. I'll get to that later, though. With my bow and arrow assets created, I had to code the mechanics and implement them in Godot. People say that VR game development is hard. Even harder than normal 3D game development. I think that's for two reasons. First, testing is a pain because you need to get your controllers and put on a headset. Fortunately, I've come up with my VR game development testing environment, TM. You see, my boy Arceus sits here on this table in the middle of my room. Then I put my headset on him so that he triggers the sensor to keep the headset on. Why Arceus? Because he's soft and won't scratch the lenses. Didn't you know Arceus was soft? Now I can sit at my desk and use my controllers while looking at my monitor so I don't have to get up and put on my headset to test. That's the first difficulty with VR game development solved, so what about the second? Well, I think that VR game development requires a deeper understanding of 3D mathematics because the interactions are physical and require more math to code. Take for example just holding a bow. It has to be facing along the vector created by the difference in the hand positions while also allowing twisting based on the hands. So it's a full 3D transformation computed dynamically from multiple factors. This type of problem is much less common in non-VR games. I feel like you really have to be comfortable with 3D transformation math to make VR games efficiently. I even have a bit of a hard time with it, even with the experience that I have. Godot has lots of functions to make it easier, but you still have to have a good idea of what you're doing. Anyways, I made it so I could hold my bow, which is great, but now comes the spaghetti. I made an animation in Blender for drawing the bow and rigged it in Godot with the incredible technique of setting the animation frame to a specific time based on a bunch of magic numbers and the distance between my hands. I'm pretty sure that's not how you're supposed to do it. I would guess that there's a way to dynamically update bone placement for the animation, but I didn't bother looking into it much. Adding the arrow was easy. Just make it a child of the bow, place it based on the hand distance, and when released, I just move it over to being a child of the world and give it a velocity. With the functional bow and arrows, which I can pull off my back, but I won't get into that, I could get to the fun part of making a 3D world. I ended up using the strange tile system built on octagon tessellation, which uses two shapes, an octagon and a square. Normally you would use Godot's grid map for tile systems, but I don't think it supports octagon tessellation. Although there is technically a hack you could do with octagon tessellation to make it fit into a grid, but I won't get into that. Also, I think you would normally try to merge the meshes in some dynamic way to remove excess faces and improve performance. If you've ever looked through a wall in Minecraft, you'd know what I'm talking about. However, the performance is so good as is that I'm just leaving it until it becomes a problem. Since I built my PC in 2018, with bare minimum VR specs, if it runs fine for me, it'll run fine for almost anyone playing the game, unless it's a questy. With a bunch of these things placed, I now have a world I can run around in. Much like many of my recent projects, I'm much further along than my videos make me out to be. This video is getting a bit long, so I'll have to cut it here. But I figured a bit of a spoiler would be cool to see since it's already working anyways. More videos coming soon. 
I was rather surprised to find that I had highly applicable foundational experience for jumping into VR game development, even though I have barely touched 3D game development in engines. VR game development is incredibly fun since you get to create the game that you're playing in. If you haven't noticed from my other games, I tend to have the most fun designing aesthetic environments. I really enjoy that from an artistic perspective, even though I hate level editing. Creating worlds in VR is really exciting from that perspective. Anyways, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.